Welcome to the third part of Unit 1, Global Heritage of the American People prior to 1500. Today we're going to start the uh, third part of this, which is Native American cultures. So we're going to look at the Iroquois Indians and uh, their culture, the way that they live their lives. So take a look at this picture here. First of all, you can see that this woman is wearing... Um, a certain kind of clothing that is native to these to the Iroquois that's made out of uh, either deer, beaver, bear skin, whatever, any kind of skin uh, that could be found. You also can see the traditional food that the Iroquois consumed, corn, beans, and squash, and fish that are fished by the men. And thirdly, you see the shelter of the Iroquois, the longhouse. And uh, this image serves as a very good uh, description of the Iroquois culture. So get to know it. We're going to be using it again. All right. Uh, the Iroquois League was a group of tribes, five different tribes, eventually six, that uh, had a great deal of power in upstate New York, basically uh, all of New York. And they are one of the largest, most powerful groups of Native Americans in the United well, in, in North America, rather, no United States yet. So in the mid-1500s, a guy named Dekanawida, or the Peacemaker, and Hayanwata, they wanted to end warfare among their tribes. They tried to get the tribes in New York to join together, and um, they were successful with that. In 1575, nations joined together to promote peace and cooperation and to end warfare. They call themselves the Iroquois League or the Iroquois Confederacy. I know the word ends in an S, but you never pronounce the S. So it's always Iroquois if it's singular or plural. Just like moose. Singular one moose is a moose. Ten moose is ten moose. No, uh, no mooses. So it's just Iroquois. Uh, number four, the five nations were the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca. That's from east to west. You need to memorize those five tribes. We're going to be looking at each one and uh, speak, talking about them in a group as well. And then finally, the Tuscarora, they joined in the early 1700s. They came from down south where they uh, lost their lands in in the region of where the where North Carolina is now, West Virginia, Virginia, that area. Uh, the Iroquois is a name given to the Indians for, by the French during the 16 and 1700s. And the Iroquois called themselves the Haudenosaunee, or which means the people of the longhouse. So they described what they lived in, or they described themselves by what they lived in. Um, other tribes are the the mound people or the tent people. Uh, these are the people of the longhouse, the Haudenosaunee. Here's an image of the three um, the three founders of the league. On the top, you have Dikanawida. He was the um, he was the peacemaker. Then Hiawatha spoke for him. And uh, Adadarhan is part of Iroquois myth. He's like, he's a god, the god of war. And you can see the snakes in his hair. And he wanted to fight, fight, fight and keep these tribes separate. But Hiawatha and Tikanawida together brought the tribes together. Uh, the Iroquois Confederation was located in what is present day state of New York along the Great Lakes, the Finger Lakes, and the Mohawk River. Notice they're located near bodies of water. Why do you think that is? What makes water so important to human beings? And if you think back into uh, last year, you learned that the uh, Mesopotamian groups there, they all were located around water. So what's the deal with that? Uh, number six there on the bottom, the, the sixth tribe, the Tuscarora, moved into New York and joined the Iroquois League in the early 1700s. And if you notice, uh, here's our county, Fulton County. What group was located near us? That'll go, to sh that'll, that'll go far with understanding a lot of the names in this area, uh, names of places, names of, um, of locations. Here's another map that shows where the 
uh, Iroquois were located. And you can also see those other groups that are around the Iroquois that surround them. So the Huron, the Algonquin, over here the Mahican, um, and then south there were other tribes. So they were located in a very important part of, the, of North America geographically. And eventually, you see here the New Netherlands, they took over the Hudson River area, and then the British too, and the French were up here in New France. So the Iroquois were between two mighty uh, European nations, France and England. So that's going to be very important for the Iroquois, to, for, the, for their, uh, basically their role in history.